Hey, what's up guys, Mendel here. So today we're gonna dive into some metal mixing templates. Let's dig right in. So we get a lot of questions why I use templates and some people might see as cheating. Uh, I fully, fully disagree. Um, there's one reason uh, that started actually made me think about using templates and that's time saving and it started with watching um, videos of Tom Holkenborg. I should say it in Dutch, Tom Holkenborg. So as some of you know, um, he's a very talented, amazing composer um, and he uses like a lot of composers templates to save time and to be more time efficient because I could imagine in that world time is probably everything. So I thought, how could I use the concept of templates like Tom was using um, and implement into metal mixing? And then I saw there were a lot of people, a lot of metal mixers using templates and this sort of stuff. And that inspired me to make my own template. So if someone would ask me, why would I need to make a metal mixing template Mendel? I could just sum it up into one word and it's efficiency. You can save a lot. And I mean a lot of time if you have a template and you don't have to take it as far that everything is pre-EQ'd, pre-set up, pre-filtered and that kind of stuff so you can import it and it's already mixed. I have some of those templates and they work really well for some projects, but you don't have to do that. But there are some basics I would recommend to do. And to show you, here's a side-by-side -side comparison. So let's compare. Here you can see one of my templates. We'll dig into the template itself later, but let's focus on how much time there can be saved. In my template, I can easily delete group tracks and folders I don't need and drag and drop the files onto the right channels. Everything's already routed and set up, so there's no time to waste doing it over and over and over again. Now, if I would start with an empty project where I would drag and drop the files in, I would have to make all the group channels, FX sense, route everything, etc., etc. Side by side comparison, it took me just four minutes to have the whole mix balanced and ready to be mixed in my template. Starting from scratch with an empty project, it took me over 15 minutes without even setting up all the FX sense. So there you go, make your template. So a cool advantage you can have is uh, because in metal we use a lot of samples, at least I do. I, I like to use samples in my mixes. So for example, I could set up my favorite samples and just by dragging this, I can instantly hear um, what sample would fit the drums. So let's say we just play this part. I think, okay, maybe try a different sample. Or another one. It can take this to a whole lot of level dude, with Tom samples, kick samples, have, have like 10 tracks ready in groups or something. The options are endless. So I would highly recommend to experiment with this. So this is one of the templates I use the most. Um, let's start on the top and we'll go briefly through it. Um, so I have everything organized in group tracks and uh, everything is routed. So for example, all my kicks are routed to shells. Uh, all the toms are to toms and the toms goes to shells. So if I want to do some EQ over here, um, some EQ moves, it will be affected on all those uh, tracks, which can save a lot of time. For example, with overheads, overhead left and right and stereo, because sometimes I receive stereo tracks and sometimes separate left and right. So I could just import it and just delete what I don't need. That's my basic philosophy of uh, importing files. Just import it and when everything's imported, I can just delete everything that's unused. So for, for example, with the bass, if I would import a DI, just put it on here, I can easily duplicate it to a different amp sims I like. For example, on this one, I have the, the VST amp rack, which I really like on bass. And I already set up the pre-fader because it, as you've probably seen in my bass video, in my bass mixing video, um, I like how this amp sounds uh, with some low end filter filter away. So I already set that up so I don't have to do this moves again. So as you can see here, uh, I can import guitar tracks here. If I get DIs, I can instantly reamp it with amp sims or route it to my camper so I can reamp it through my camper. And one important thing to notice, which I'll show you with the, uh, with the scream. So these are vocal tracks where I put all the screams and gutturals and like heavy stuff, <laughs> which we have in metal. 
And as you can see, I have the brick wall limiter on there. I like the brick wall limiter a lot on vocals. But the cool function in Cubase is, uh, let me go through the vocals here. So I linked all the vocals uh, together. So how you do that, you just press shift, select the tool, tool where you want, right click, link tracks. And then you have these options um, which you want to link. So let's, for example, say uh, I link the insert on this one, which means if I import the, import the vocals and most, most of the time the vocals are um, around the same level, I can just press one of the limiters and let's open the second one. But because they're linked, um, they'll operate together. So I don't have to either do one and then copy it to all of the other ones. I think you get the point. With linking tracks, you can save time. You can do it with guitar tracks and stuff like that. Also, everything in this project is pre-panned. And I can always adjust it, but as you can see, the guitar left is already panned to the left. These are minor things. You could say it would take a second, but uh, working throughout a year, all those seconds can add up to hours. And to be honest, sometimes can even add up to days. So if I could give five simple tips for templates, it would be this. One, color code your tracks. You have eyes, use them. If you color code your tracks, I like to make my drums blue. I like to make my bass pink because bass players, etc., etc. Especially when having bigger projects, it's so much easier to have your tracks color coded. Two, pre pan your tracks. You can always adjust them later, but I know if I get two guitar performances, I put one on the left, one on the right. It's simple as that. Same thing with vocals. When I get multiple vocals, I like to have some centered, some left and right, so why not pre-pan them? Three, group your tracks. Grouping your tracks is a big plus for your oversight for the whole mix. You can easily mute stuff if you just wanna hear a certain part or a certain instrument or a certain section. So again, it's easy to do, just group your tracks. Besides that, also fold your tracks so everything's well organized. Number four would be route all your tracks. Route all your effects to the stuff you want to have effects on. I do the effects of my reverbs on the snares and uh, toms. When you have all that stuff set up, then the only thing you have to do is pull the fader up and down and there's your effect. And number five, if needed or if wanted, you can pre-EQ and pre-compress your tracks. So for an example, when I'm gonna mix a death metal record that's like really fast and there's gutturals and there's heavy guitars and blast beats, 300 BPM, hammer blasts and stuff like that, all the stuff going on, I know I'm gonna filter my overheads to a 500 Hertz minimum because I don't wanna have a lot of that snare mid and the kick drums uh, in my mix because it's gonna make the whole mix cloudy. So with some templates, I have set up filters to 500 or 700 Hertz. So when I import all the drums, all the stuff is already cleaned up. Again, saves time. So that's it for metal mixing templates. As always, hope you guys learned something today. And please let me know in the comments what you guys want to see next. And until then, see you next time.